Hello. On behalf of the director, Susan Weber, it's my pleasure to welcome all of you here today for uh, the Symposium on Conserving Active Matter Material Science. Uh, as uh, the, the welcome is to all of you here in this room, in the overflow room, those of you around the world watching on BGC TV, and those of you in time future watching this uh, on an archived copy. Uh, here on West 86th Street, uh, we are also, and the Bard Graduate Center is uh, happy and grateful to acknowledge, we are also on uh, the island of Manahata on the ancient ancestral homelands of the Lenape peoples. Uh, in terms of conserving active matter, we are nel mezzo di cammin di nostra vita, midway through the journey of our grant. Um, and so I'd like to say just a word about what conserving active matter might be. Given that all organic material is active, what are we talking about when we use the term of art, active matter? We're referring to objects in which this kind of activity is intended and sought after as the object's telos, rather than something which might be incidental to the object and is therefore to be suppressed or stabilized. Much conservation thinking has, of course, gone into dealing with the activity of matter, but it is um, of the second sort rather than the first, the activity of matter, but not active matter. Uh, our inspiration for this project is twofold. The Berlin Excellence Cluster Built Wissen Gestaltung that produced this volume, catalog of an exhibition that was at the Martin Gropius Bau in Berlin a couple of years ago. Uh, it is now in the second installment of its grant and is the group is um, with a new title, not coincidentally, Matters of Activity. Uh, and the second inspiration for us was the Active Matter Summit at MIT that produced this book that some of you uh, may know. What we are doing here, however, at the Bard Graduate Center is using this of the moment construct to explore conservation thinking past and future for its premises, sometimes conscious, sometimes not, and its implications. By conservation thinking, I mean problem solving the temporalities of material. This exploration, while it may take us towards a way of thinking about conservation for 21st century objects and materials, will certainly work to connect conservation with history, philosophy, anthropology, and material science, four central axes of the Bard Graduate Center's intellectual armature. And not co so coincidentally, these are the four working groups that are articulating this project here at the Bard Graduate Center. The group on indigenous ontologies, uh, or perhaps archly working group GLASS, uh, met here last April. That on history, led by Itai Weinrib and myself, met here in November. And next November, on uh, Friday the 8th, if you are uh, wanting to put it in your calendar already, the working group uh, le on philosophy, led by Ivan Gaskell and Ann Eaton, will have its event. But today, and for the next uh, 48 hours, 36 hours, um, assuming that you dream about this uh, tonight, we are going to focus on material science and the working group led by Jennifer Maas. And so it is with great pleasure and great anticipation that I happily turn the podium over to her. Peter is always a tough act to follow, but I'm going to do my best. So on to the topic of active matter. What is active matter? We had one definition from Peter, and you'll see over the course of the two days that everyone in the department will have a slightly different definition, which is just what we strive for at Bard. So we're in a room full of cultural heritage scientists and conservators and art historians. And we're keenly aware that at any temperature above zero, absolute zero, or zero degrees Kelvin, that all matter is constantly in motion. It's constantly active. However, as a field, this has not always been reflected in our conservation treatments, and sometimes not even in our thinking. The concept of stabilization has been an enduring one in the field of art conservation. However, we can see that in the case, for example, of cradling paintings on panel, 
or situations where sealing off museum cases has inadvertently created damaging microclimates, this concept of trying to restrain or resist activity has not always served us well. In the instance of old master paintings, the desire for materials to remain as unchanged as possible over time is not only still with us, but it also makes tremendous sense. However, if we move to the cases of installation art, time-based media, art made with biological materials, and art that is born digital, then the guiding tenets of the conservator become much less obvious. Much important critical thinking has already been done in this area, and critical publications on this topic have been published for the conservation community. At the same time, however, our understanding of cultural heritage is at an inflection point. There's a great realization that our interpretation of objects is deeply rooted in our cultural contexts and environments. One example of that is the problematic nature of the term ethnographic art, and how little this term actually makes sense, depending on how or where an object is installed, or indeed who's writing the label copy. We are also currently witnessing the dawn of a global movement for the post-colonial repatriation of objects. So cultural heritage professional, pro professionals have thus found ourselves in the middle of a great anxiety with respect to our treatment and understanding of objects. As a result, we feel that this is an excellent time to bring humanities to the table, to work with historians and anthropologists, philosophers, as we have traditionally worked with art historians toward the conservation theory that may either need to be bespoke for specific types of contemporary objects, as has been previously proposed by Glenn Morton, or flexible enough to be all-encompassing. We know that conservation theory is also not global, and that, for example, Japanese theories of authenticity appear to be at odds with Western ones. To conclude, we have in reality always existed in a changing landscape of conservation theory and practice. I look forward to two days of stimulating discussions of objects and phenomena that challenge our current thinking. We have set up panels at the end of each session with the hope that you will all join us in the discussion. So now on to some <laughs> housekeeping matters. The big scary electronic door for the conference room. If that door, or when that door does close, you can still get out of this room at the back. There's an exit sign. Now, coffee breaks. Um, coffee is going to be after the second presentation in each session. And we also have a packed schedule for the next couple days. So we're going to be pretty draconian when it comes to staying on time. But even if we don't get to questions after your particular lecture, we're going to have uh, the long panel discussions at the end uh, of each session. So everybody's going to have plenty of time to participate. And we greatly look forward to your participation.